and welcome back to the Crumble Cottage Kitchen. Today we are going to make one of my absolute family favourites which is caramel apple tray bake. It's very very simple, uh, the sponge will look after itself while you make your caramel afterwards. So we'll get going. I'm going to start off with a bowl of self-raising flour. I'm not going through all the ingredient quantities now because the full recipe is on the website and into that we are going to mix our light brown soft sugar and our baking powder. So really, you can stir it with a wooden spoon, but I'm not using my trusty mixer. The next thing we're going to do is add our four beaten eggs. Slowly. And at the same time, we've got our melted butter. Do remember to do this in advance. It is easier than stopping at this stage. There we go. Once that's nicely combined, you can stop. And that is your basic sponge, okay? So what we're going to do next is get it into our tin. Now, I've already prepared my tin. It's greased and lined, and you'll notice that the lining paper is coming up out of the sides of the tin. This is actually quite important for this because you can eat this cake when it's warm, so you need to be able to unmould it first. Okay. And in it goes. Now, if you're anything like my family, you like a bit of leftover cake batter in the bowl, so we'll leave that there for afters. And smooth out your mixture into the tin making sure that you get some into the corners of the tin so you have a nice even bake. And then it's the decorating stage. So what I've got here are good cooking apples. These are crimson bramley uh, from the tree, um, but any good cooker will do, but it does need to be a cooker, not an eater. They are peeled, cored and sliced, and then we're just going to arrange them in rows on the top of the cake. Now if you want to add any variation to your sponge, you can of course do so. So you could put some chopped pecans in there, or you could add a bit of cinnamon to the mix if you wanted to as well. I'm keeping it plain today because the star of the show is really the caramel. And it doesn't matter if your apple slices aren't even. This is a home bake. We're not presenting it in a fine patisserie shop. cake is now in its tin with its apple slices on the top and the final thing we're going to do before it goes in the oven is just sprinkle a little bit of caster sugar over the top. You don't have to do this if you don't want to but it does add a little bit extra. There we go and that is now ready for the oven. So we're all set for the oven and my oven is a fan, 160 degrees, and this is going to go in for 45 minutes before we take a look. If you do put nuts in it, it might take a little bit longer to cook, but certainly start off with 45 minutes. So here we go. So we're just going to take it out of the oven and have a look and see how it's going. There we go. Let's get that out. That, I'm sure, is done. I would call that done. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. If it goes in any longer, I'm going to dry out the edges, which I don't want to do. So we're going to let that sit there and cool, and I'm now going to make the caramel for the top and show you how to do that. The next stage is to make our caramel. Now, if you haven't made caramel before, don't be frightened. It really isn't that difficult. We have a saucepan which has got our water in it. All the measurements are on the website. And now I'm going to add my caster sugar. Now we give it, at this stage, a very little stir, just to help it disperse in the water. And then we don't stir it anymore. And the reason for that is if you stir it, then it will crystallise, so we don't stir it. Um, what you can do is swirl the pan very gently, so we'll be doing that at some point. And as you can see as well, I have a sugar thermometer. 
you don't need a sugar thermometer, but having both undercooked and burnt caramel before, I like to use a sugar thermometer. So on we go. We just wait for that to dissolve, swirl it occasionally, and the thermometer will tell us when we've reached caramel stage. You can see here now that the sugar is dissolved. I'm just going to give it a little swirl just to make sure there's no granular bits in the bottom. And it's really going to start coming up to temperature now. So I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit. Um, if you have small children, do keep them out of the kitchen at this stage because this gets extremely hot and you don't want any home accidents. And then the sugar will just begin to bubble up and it will start the caramelising process. At the moment, according to my thermometer, I'm on sterilised, so we've got a way to go, but it doesn't take long from here. It bubbles really rapidly at this point, and then it, the bubbles sort of slow down as it gets closer to caramelly. We're nearly there with the caramel now, and it's really important that you keep an eye on the pan. Um, I'm not yet up to temperature, but as you can see, if you look in the pan, the bubbles have slowed down, and it is starting to colour. And to ensure you keep the colouring even, just give it a little swirl and keep cooking. We're at 160 degrees, we've got to get up to about 175 to 180 for caramel, so that's going nicely, it won't be long now. It's looking really good and it's just coming up to caramel temperature now. As I say, if you don't have a sugar thermometer, what you're looking for is a nice deep dark coppery colour. Alright, my thermometer is saying caramel, so I'm going to take that out says easier said than done and put that down and I'm really happy with that colour I don't want to go any more because I don't want to burn it so what I'm going to do lift this off take it over to your work surface and stand it on a tea towel and now you've got your jug with your cream and your vanilla extract in and we go okay and it will really steam but that's absolutely fine just keep stirring Whew, through the steam I can't see what I'm doing there we go keep pouring a bit more careful this is really really hot even the steam is hot cream in stir 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 and there you go you now have caramel and you can see as the bubbles die down that you've got perfect caramel there we go done it's not difficult the next stage is to add some to our cake and I'm going to add it while it's still this hot because it's really absolutely fine to do so. So I have my trusty pastry brush. I'm actually going to pick this up with the tea towel because it's still incredibly hot. And we're just going to pour a bit onto our cake and brush it in with the pastry brush. Over we go. Oh god, that looks amazing. You can be as generous or as stingy as you like, but as I said earlier, this is all about the caramel. So I'm going to be quite generous. There we go. Right, let's just brush that in. And there you have it. Caramel apple tray bake. And that will soak in and be fabulous. So what I would do now is just leave this to cool a little bit and then using the paper, lift it out onto a baking rack or onto a table. And then you can eat it warm from the oven, either with creme fraiche, ice cream or custard, or you can let it cool down and you can just have it with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee later and it's absolutely perfect for bonfire nights. If you want to feed your children on it before you go outside into the cold, or you want to have it as a treat with some hot chocolate when they come back in, whatever you want, it works really, really well, and it's just fabulous, we love it. And I haven't used all the caramel on the tray bake, so what I've got is a clean jam jar. I'll just put the rest of it in there. Don't pick the jam jar up at this stage, it's still incredibly hot let it cool and then you can use it to fill cupcakes, you can have it on ice cream, you can use it in a buttercream, or you can do as I was doing this morning and just eat it from the jar. 